Right then, episode 8 of Tunnels, and in this episode we return back to London Tideway. And since I last went down London Thames Tideway, some things have changed. So you know what that means, we need to go back down there and see what's different. So in this episode, we're going to be starting this time at Greenwich. We're then going to walk the entire Greenwich Line to Bermondsey Chambers Wharf, then switch to the Abbey Line and walk across and leave at Wapping. That's right, Wapping Shaft has now been connected to the Tideway Tunnel, so we need to take a look at that. But first we're starting at Greenwich. Let's take a look at the shaft and notice how different this looks. A lot has changed. All of the pipes of the slurry system from a tunnel boy machine have now been removed. Also the climbing lift looks like it's changed position and they've added some steps down the shaft. Well that makes it a lot easier to get down it. So let's walk down the steps down the Greenwich shaft. episode 8. So welcome to episode 8 of Tideway. And here I am at the bottom of the Greenwich shaft. Looking up the shaft it looks very different to before. It barely even looks like I'm in the same place it's so different. So then let's now walk into the Tideway tunnel and start our walk along to Wapping. Take a look at the tunnel. Look at that on its second lining. This machine wasn't here last time. And along to the first piece of equipment. This is not a secondary liner machine. This seems like this some sort of gantry platform. This is on wheels and moves itself along the tideway tunnel as the secondary liners go down. I'm not quite sure of the purpose of this. Maybe this is an inspection platform so that the secondary lining can be inspected after it's been installed. So let's now continue down the tideway tunnel. Notice the tunnel has changed. This is where the secondary liner machines have done their job and secondary lined the tunnel. It actually looks not that much different to the Bristol Tideway Tunnel, apart from the fact London Tideway has a much larger diameter than Bristol. And just look at how different it looks. It's like a twisting long sewer pipe. It's actually at this point pretty much completed. Now on this part they do have the temporary lights lighting up the tunnel, but further down the tide of the tunnel and on the other parts of tide which I haven't managed to get to, such as over on the west of the system, after the machines have gone through, that's pretty much the tunnel finished. So at that point I no longer need to keep the tunnel lit. Wow, I can't believe we got back in here again. It feels like my home I've been in here so many times. Yeah, this looks a bit like Bristol Tideway, but bigger. So let's continue walking our way down Tideway. And even though the train tracks are gone, Tideway actually has another form of transport. A little trolley I can sit on. If you remember from episode 6, Deptford Station is a very short way after Greenwich Station and we are now approaching Deptford. Let's take a look at the Deptford shaft. This shaft has not really changed that much. So then let's continue to walk along the Tideway Tunnel. Notice at this point it is dark. Notice at this point there's no longer any lights in the tunnel. This is because there's no longer any need to keep the tunnel lit. After the secondary lines have passed the tunnel is complete. Although in the distance there is a very bright light. That is the bright light on the back of the last one of the secondary liner machines. Let's go and take a look at it. Now previously there was just two secondary liner machines just installed when I was last here, but now a lot more secondary liner machines have now been installed. In fact, some of them are joined together a bit like a train of secondary liners. So here we are at a secondary liner machine, let's take a look at it. They still look fairly new, although they're slightly more dusty because they have started doing their work here. Second liner. So as we walk through the secondary liners, notice these secondary liners are joined together. So it is like a train of them. Oh, 
cones are to be greased before every pour. Oh, cone. It's supposed to be a okay, but yeah, I don't think it's going to lift. How many safety liners are there? When I last came, there was only like two. There's now several. So I walked through the first train which consists of three secondary liner machines and after this one we go along and there's some more secondary liner machines and notice here you can still see the original segmented lining the secondary lining has not gone in yet at this part this is because a train of secondary lining machines does not make a continuous lining because of the extra equipment either side of the concrete pores so the machines all make a secondary lining then the entire train is moved along then they make further secondary linings to fill in the bits that were left out So along to the next secondary liner machine. Let's take a look up the stairs and take a look at the ceiling. And you can see here the tunnel which has just had its secondary lining put in. Mm, smell that concrete. So we continue along this train of secondary liners. So along to the next secondary liner machine, let's walk through this one. And we've now walked through all of the secondary liner machines. And let's now go along to where the train tracks are. As the secondary liner machines approach the train tracks, the tracks are lifted up and moved along. So let's go along to this part, which is a station on the railway. This is a station where there's a refreshment room for the staff at work here. This is where the trains come in and deliver stuff to the staff. This station is in fact actually a train of its own right. Because this station and train track is actually sitting on top of the original train tracks. This means they can move the station along as the secondary liner approaches the station. Then after the station has moved along, they can then lift up the train tracks behind the station as it clears the tracks. So then, let's take a look at its movable station. Also notice you've got the red LEDs. This is a signal. This is using LED strips so the signal can be seen anywhere along the train rather than just at the front of the train, which is actually very useful. And now let's take a look at some of the trains. Yeah, different aren't they from last time? That's different, that thing. Now this is a bit more similar. Well here's a passenger train here. This is a Greenwich Line train to Chambers Wharf. And along to a substation. Substation, pedestrian walkway. Ah, the walkway has started. It's quite buzzy at a substation. Big substation. That sounds like it's at full capacity. And now we go along to the refreshment cabin. This part is still on a movable platform, so this is still on the station. So this whole section of the start of the station, the passing place, and the refreshment cabins at the rear of the station, all of this is moved along as the secondary line machine approaches. And here is some equipment at the end of the movable station. Then we go to this part, which is a set of train tracks on top of the main tracks. This is to move the trains between the actual tracks to the tracks on top of the moving station platform. So then we've now passed all of the parts being used for the secondary lining. We're now back on original tideway. 
and there is some more trains. Right, that shows you how loud train is if a train driver has to wear earmuffs. So we pass the trains continuing down the Tideway Tunnel. The rest of the tunnel is now exactly the same as what you've already seen in episode 6. So since you've already seen the walk along Greenwich Line, in this episode I'm only going to show the parts which have changed since episode 6. So I now continue walking down the Greenwich Line. One thing that has changed is there's these things making a lot of noise. And I'll go all the way down along to Surrey Key Station, which looks like not much has changed here since episode 6, although it's now full of leaves. They're still open, they haven't done it yet, have they? Home captive, there's a lot of leaves. I didn't expect to see loads of leaves down here, that's the last thing I thought I'd see. So continuing down Tideway and I now come along to where the tunnel boring machine used to be. But sadly it has now gone. That makes me feel quite sad because I really enjoyed seeing a tunnel boring machine. But hey, the machine's done its job. It's now been taken out and it's off to bore a tunnel somewhere else. So I know I come to Bermondsey Chambers Wharf Station. And oh wow, this has changed a lot. And there is a massive secondary liner machine sitting here, it's just been lowered down the shaft. This secondary lining machine is for the Abbey Line, and the Abbey Line has a much larger diameter than the Greenwich Line, meaning it needs much larger secondary lining machines. These machines are big, very, very big. Here is one of the secondary liners on the Abbey Line, and holy fuck, that is a big, big machine. And let's now start walking down the Abbey Line. Also notice the train tracks on the floor. These train tracks are not the same size of train track as the train tracks for the Tunnel Boy machine. These new tracks for secondary liner are a much wider gauge and look a bit more like standard gauge. When the trains for Tunnel Boy machine were narrow gauge. So don't let that deceive you. Because the track's wider here, it takes away the effects of how big this tunnel is. This is a very big diameter tunnel. And it is crazy seeing the scale of how much bigger everything is on the Abbey Line compared to the Greenwich Line. Tunnel. But I think that shows you why the secondary lining is needed because there is water ingress at certain points along the tunnel. And here is the movable station for the secondary liner machines of the Abbey Line. Oh, look, he actually uses train track. He sits on the train track, I think. There's a big train. There's a GWR train parked up there. <laughs> this is completely different. There's mail rails compared, though. Oh, yeah, to deliver all the letters down here. Eh?
So let's now walk up the Abbey Line and along to Wapping. Flashy. And now I come along to Wapping Shaft. Finally, at long last, after a very long delay, I don't even know why they took so long, but finally I've now broken through from the Wapping Shaft into the Tidewade Tunnel. So I can now leave the Tidewade site from Wapping. Sadly, once again, I ran out of time and was not able to get to Abbey Mills. I really wonder what is actually at Abbey Mills. Sadly, I don't get to find out on this episode. 